right. Well, welcome to another episode of the Rest and Recovery Podcast. And with me is Miss Kristen Weitzel. Uh, she is a health and high performance coach. Uh, Kristen, welcome. Great to Thanks have you. Thanks so for having me. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, Scott. I always want to talk about rest and recovery, especially this time of year yeah. <laughs> when everybody needs it more than ever. Um, I was just mentioning to you uh, off recording that I got just got back from this beautiful work trip to Amsterdam and um, yeah, coming off the jet lag makes me realize all of the wonderful tools that I need to utilize to, yeah. to shape shift my time zone. Yep. Yeah. An opportunity to uh, use all the tools we, we talk about, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, um, how was the trip? It was great. I was there. Um, I work pretty closely for the last few years with Casper Vandermulen, who is a wonderful breath Master, he worked with Wim Hof for a while, um, for a number of years. He was his right hand man, and he uh, has his own sort of breathwork tribe. And so, I finished my masterful breath coaching mentorship and uh, level three experience certification, all that. So it was super cool. Um, just merging the, the the most important thing I think that we continue to need to work with is the breath. Yeah, um, it's a very s- strong baseline, right around around recovery, around understanding our own selves, understanding our emotions, understanding how we can best show up uh, in the peak expression of ourselves in the world. And there's a really nice blend. I've been able to luckily train with a number of people and get a number of certifications and then work with bodies where I can blend both a bit of the science, right? The physiological right. science and nervous system understanding um, alongside protocols and some of the, the more woo-woo, you know, the woo adjacent things that exist in the world, just like how we can do transformational healing and how we can peel back some of the layers using the breath in um, some of the more intense, intense sessions I I do in my own space, in my own home um, and at events in person breath work is just, it's, it's been more of a rarity the last couple of years, as you can imagine. And so it's beautiful to spend time, um, you know, everyone like tested and we went to this retreat center and I was there for a month. So it was, it was, Oh wow. Yeah, it was beautiful. I was, assisting, helping coach and train other coaches, as well as I'm um, continuing my, my curiosity and fulfilling my learning. So beautiful trip. That's great. Trip. You, know, I, you know, I like the woo woo adjacent. That's pretty funny. Uh, around breath, breath work, you know, how important is that around the rest and recovery element, whether it's a man or a woman, um, from your perspective. And, and, and before you answer, uh, I'll add in, why do you, maybe start here. Why do you think we overlook some of those simple things like breath work? And because even myself, it was like, I'd blow it off, right? I'll work breath work, breath work whatever. I, I breathe fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great that there's like, there is a definite conversation to be had about the difference between men and women, but generally speaking across all beings, we are, um, it's there, it's free. It's easy to access. It's right it's in the space and we're breathing all the time, right? We don't stop breathing. So right. we feel like, Oh, I'm breathing. That's kind of fine. And what's breath work really going to do for me? Right. Um, it's a question I think that I hear from clients after they've gone through one of the weeks of my online course, or when I'm private coaching one-on-one, I have a f- two or three moments within the coaching 13 weeks we work together where I'm working with them with breath. And I, they have come back to me, women who I predominantly work with females. They've come back to me and said, Hey, I, when you gave me all this like breath conversation and a little bit of the physiology and science and then gave me these exercises to do, I kind of went away like, okay, I'm going to breathe. <laughs> you know, what's it going to do? And then they will come back to me and say that they, they will tell me that they thought that they won't say that in the moment, of course, because they don't want to offend me or whatever they think. And um, they've just invested a lot of money to work with me. And they're like, wait, what? I'm breathing. I'm already breathing. Yeah. Uh, and, but then they come back and they say, I can't believe that the adjustments you gave me, like my anxiety levels just totally dissipated. I'm, I slept differently this whole week. You know, and if I did the work, which is not a lot of work, we're talking about like 10, 20 minutes a day of uh, breathing practices and just having a few sort of practices or protocols in your pocket to be able yeah. to down regulate when you, when you have an anxiety response to something or a stress response, that it's just, it's totally state shifting. And that's, you know, thankfully breath, I think has come more into the forefront of everybody's conversation now, but also I think it's so easily right there and people aren't getting the right education around it. Just a minimal education, but understanding how it is connected to our feeling of safety, yep. 
to our nervous system response. And when we are safe and we are down regulating, we can actually tap into spaces of our psyche and spaces of our body that shift everything, including, you know, feeling happy and feeling joyful and just transitioning through emotional states we may be all feeling coming off of I was continuing on to quarantine and right. holidays and, and you know all the things that are happening in the world with anxiety and and you know mental challenges. Yeah. And just being able to adapt to circumstances and and I like the point of where you get a little more in touch and aware of circumstances if you're focusing on your breath, at least in the few moments that I've been practicing for a little while. And, um, I like the safety and the security piece you mentioned, because then it, it, it gives you an element of sovereignty, right? Some personal control of even the external influencers in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that safety piece is we don't give it enough credit. Uh, the more that I sort of roll with people in the breathwork community, some of the ice community, cause you know, I'm a super fan of ice baths. But just breath and a little bit, even in like the plant medicine world, there are, I do, I do some coaching and I do some breath work within that space. And there are just, you know, how beautiful does it feel when you get to be surrounded by people that you can actually be safe enough to be vulnerable, to speak your truth, to say things that may not be um, welcome in other spaces. And, and just to like have those conversations feeling you know, I, a lot of times I'm, when people are like, no judgments, I'm like, right, no judgments, <laughs> right. But You're judging me for thing. not judging me. I know, exactly. But this is the thing is like we, I, I, and breathwork, I think is a gateway to this. This like be, being able to receive people in the way that they show up and letting people be, feel safe enough to, you know, are feeling safe enough in your own body to be able to create and hold space for someone else to feel safe enough to share with you things that may, may or may not feel, um, it's not easy to be vulnerable. Yeah. And the more vulnerable we can all be, the more we can talk, the more that we can, you know, cross the aisle and have more conversations that, and discourse that, you know, we don't have to agree. We can with each other, to, and, but we can still realize that like we breathe in the same way we can co-regulate together. We can understand each other. And like, that's like, that sounds like a little bit of woo adjacency right there, but it's, that's the important thing, right? If we are all living in a space of, of being more recovered and taking care and tuning in with our bodies and our breath and our nervous system. We're in a space of, 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 I think, you know, healing and self-love and loving each other and all those things that come along with that. And that's essentially, that's what it's all about. I think the, the, the older I get and the more I do this work, the more I see people feeling in community and feeling in self-love and feeling um, okay to talk about what they really want to speak. Um, the changes. Yeah. It's that, it's that kind of, um, let's say permission, but we're kind of all looking for that affirmation to like be a little bit vulnerable, that permission to be able to do certain things. And regardless of the, like the segments or micro segments of society, men or women, or like whatever demographic you want to put through the, the cycle is about the same. And they're all trying to look through the same human condition of kind of some encouragement and affirmation to kind of walk it out in who you are and find who you are and have yeah. that ability to be, you know, life is a little messy. So like allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and the agree to dis disagree, like you mentioned, you know, regardless of perspective, find some comp, you know, the, the common ground to be yeah. able to communicate and the breath work that you're talking about with the physiology, like it reduces our stress load and the physiological effect. And then we're not as, you know, triggered, <laughs> uh, yeah to respond, sure. respond a certain way. Yeah. And I also just want to like address one thing, like terminology wise that you touched on, which is, um, we all want a little bit of permission to be able to show up as the people that we are. And I think that the big secret is, you know, and I, I think a lot of this has come through sort of expansive understanding through my breath and through the work that I've done in biohacking and with clients and, you know, on ourselves, it's like self work. We have to do this, like living in sovereignty. I'm going to figure out who I am as a person in the world and bring that to the world in the very best way that I can. And the, this giving, getting permission to be able to be the fullest expression of yourself, I think is like the, the secret really is that what we really are trying to find is the permission to give ourselves permission, right? It's like not, it's not, we don't need permission. And to anyone who's listening, it's like, you may not understand, or it may not make sense in this way that I'm speaking. If you've not talked and touched on a lot of breath work, how breath work can be this portal to giving yourself permission 
to having your own permission to be sovereign in the world. But there is a, a space where you are like, exactly like you just said, Scott, you are in a safe space and you feel like you are not triggered and you can kind of navigate emotions and navigate who you are and your responses with a little bit more discernment. Yeah. And Love the that fact word. that breath is that pathway to that being able to give yourself I see this all the time. It's like, even with clients, it's like, they're asking for permission to do the thing and that's cool. And also they have the permission they, uh, innately. And essentially we already have the permission to be the people that we want to be, you know, it's like within, I think you know, surely there are some parameters, right? It's like, we're sovereign <laughs> as long as you're not like lighting people's houses on fire and doing yeah. that maybe. <laughs> But hopefully if your nervous system is calm, maybe, you know, you're not doing that. So, so for anyone who's listening, I think that this is the other thing is like releasing some of the negative self-talk and being able to give yourself permission to stand in front of people you love or people that you're just getting to know. And, um, Gabby Reese said this thing, my friend, Mike has like reiterated it to me and I've written about it on social. It's like the permission to go first. Yeah. Because we're all like a little lonely and a little afraid and a little stressed and a little, we all have those things coming up. And so how do we go first? How do we like lay into a group of new people? Someone said to me recently, just yesterday, like, how did you have 12 strangers over in your house and like do breathing and cacao and ice with them? It's like, what do you mean? How? I just had them over. I wanted to give back to the Austin community. I wanted people to um, get a taste of the work that I'm doing. And I wanted to be able to breathe people so that they could feel their full awareness. They could feel different things, you know, transformational yeah. breath work or uncomfortable or happy or whatever, wherever it put them. Right. And so that um, that's like a gateway to more self-awareness. So I think it's, you know, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. It is. Yeah. It is. So, so pulling on that thread a little further, you focus on women. Mm-hmm. And I know in, in our previous conversation and in a common, well, good friend of yours, uh, a person I've gotten to know a little bit is Dasha Maximo. Mm -hmm. She introduced us. And so in t when it comes to women's health and there's, there's um, a bit of a gap when it comes to the ability to equip women effectively, you know, there's a, a deep thing on medical science where there's kind of limited data. But how do you, in, in your space, uh, start to work with women to kind of go down that path, right? How do, to, does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. And it's like, for, for, for anyone who's listening to this too, it's like, it's, I work with women and also a lot of these conversations that I have around women's health, they're applicable to everyone because every man that I know and any, any you know, no matter what stance you take on the way that you show up in the world, physiologically, biologically, et cetera, like you're, you're, you know, a woman, <laughs> you know, a female that's a physiological female. Right. And, um, I have a lot in my matter, life. Yeah. You have a lot of, I remember that you have a lot. <laughs> and so it's like, why not get to know that, that, that type of physiology so that you can like understand it best as possible and maybe support the women that are in your circles. And the, uh, you know, I, I work in a lot of different areas of females li lives. I work a lot around the hormone cycle. I work a lot with perimenopausal and menopausal women trying to maintain muscle mass and understand best how they can work out, train, eat, and take care of themselves, release some of the, the, you know, the stuff that they're carrying. And, um, that doesn't necessarily mean I never say weight loss. I always talk about fat loss. Cause of course people come to me, they want physique transformation, but really it's like, great, I'll give you that. And then also I'm going to give you what you need which is an understanding for females that we breathe differently according to our hormone cycle, that we need more sleep. Generally speaking, we need like 30 to 45 minutes more sleep on average at night Oh wow! Um, to function, um, to feel like we're functioning well. Um, it is one part of the day that we are making HGH and um, especially as we age, right? We need to be able to mitigate what's happening with our other hormones and see what's taking over for for our sex hormones and, um, breathing, like, you know, uh, the couple of the couple areas that are really big to me is like train women training fitness with their cycle. So just understanding, mm -hmm. um, there's about eight days or so that we have es an estrogen in increase and spike in our body, how we can utilize that in order to build more muscle. There is tons of research around that, um, proof points, just showcasing that over and over and over again. And we haven't really been talking about it a lot. Um, some of the estrogen spike that we have in our body helps us with glucose uptake. So there are times that we can cycle food differently. So food, fitness, fasting, and then even breath, it's like day 10 to 22 of our cycle. We have, um, because of the way that our hormones are fluctuating, we, there is like less of an opportunity. They say up to the research is like, it's up to 25%, um, 
carbon dioxide, which means we are getting up to 25% less oxygenation in our tissues during that course of the month, which tends to lead us to overbreathe and mouth breathe, which there is a hypothesis that's sort of been made by Patrick McEwen and some other researchers that PMS is part and parcel. And I'm not saying that it's all coming from breathing, but you know, and there are also women dealing with larger issues like endometriosis and other challenges in that arena. Sure. But there are, you know, day 10 to 22 of our cycle. So if the first day of our period is day one, well, by the time we get to day 10 and leading into day 22, we're getting less and less capacity in the, the, the range of those days to uptake oxygen. So if you have your marathon in that week, how's that going to affect you? When you're going to do your workout, how's that going to affect you? What kind of protocols can you put into those days and others to be able to build a better system, overall holistic system to be able to, to manage that? And the hypothesis is that we overbreathe more as females during that part of our cycle. And those are the days that lead up to this thing that we call PMS. And that a lot of the symptomatic stuff that's coming in PMS is coming from overbreathing. Right? We overbreathe, we chest breathe, we're taking too many breaths a minute, we become more pain sensitive, our pelvic floor is less intact in the way of like being able to like hold onto those muscles. We're dealing with pain and cramps and all these things that then kind of come down the way. And of course, PMS can feel more exacerbated because we aren't breathing as optimally um, by no fault of our own in some ways, but we don't, we don't, you don't know what you don't know. Right. We're working around breath in that regard, working around fasting, working around other, just other components of women's lives. I think it's an important thing to experiment with. And I need to also say this thing, which is for men and women, it is always an end of one experiment, right? Your experience is your own. Your physiology is your own. No two bodies are exactly the same on this planet. And so there are different breathwork techniques, different ways you go in the ice, different levels of stress we deal with every day, male or female, but specifically and especially women, because we are so sensitive to change and to stress. We tend to be like, you know, when you look at um, anxiety and depression and things like that, we tend to be more um, susceptible to that than male physiological mm -hmm. males. And so that's something else to look at. So we are equally as powerful as we are sensitive, right? And right. that's something that we really need to I talk a lot about this with women. It doesn't mean men aren't sensitive. It just means our bodies as females are navigating a 24 hour cycle. similar to like how a man's navigating 24 hour circadian rhythm cycle and a men's hormone cycle is much more um, regulated. If you want yeah. to say like just regular, you know, yes, frequency yes. 24 hours. And then I, I like to say, you know, I'm a different person every single day of the month, <laughs> but we have a different cycle too, right? We have four phases of the month and like we need to, it affects our brain chemistry. It affects how we take in the world, how we consider the community, how we process decision-making. And that all of that is just to say, like, how do we look at our bodies in space in this end of one experiment to see what's going to work the best for us? And the only way that we can is getting the knowledge and then yeah. trying out these tactics, you know, and navigating a bit of, what's going to work best for me. Yeah. And that takes time and people don't have a lot of time. I mean, look at <laughs> people have a lot of time, but here's the yeah. thing. We're all like hungry to have the 15 second hit from like Instagram or a quick blog or yep. whatever. And it's not, you know, these practices have to be put into play repeatedly, consistently, and just small ways. It's the simple consistencies every single day that make the long-term change. And yeah. we don't want that. We want the magic silver bullet and it doesn't yeah. exist people. <laughs> The magic bullet is, you know, it's the brush your teeth method, right? Dentists did a great job with being able to instill that, you know, basic rhythm of life or whatever metaphor you want to use. It's that daily consistent little action that takes time. So what you were saying there um, made me think a little bit of like you were talking about the PMS window in more carbon dioxide, if I'm remembering correctly. And so it made me think of like, the permission piece that we were talking about, not permission per se, but contextual understanding of why you may feel more tired, right? Yeah. A, a woman may feel more tired during a, a specific time, whether it's working out or doing all the mom logistics and things of that nature, yeah. at least you can validate, oh, I'm more tired from this rather than like you had mentioned, kind of that negative self-talk. Oh, yeah. and, and, and that I think everybody can relate to. I certainly yeah. can is when I don't feel a certain way, I'm, I'm kind of like, why, 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 do, you know, I'm doing all these things. And the reality is there's some things that are a little bit out of your control or influence. And, um, that breath work seems like an empowering thing to kind of stem the tide, so to speak. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it is. I mean, the 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 thing for women in those days, 10 to 22, is like, not to get into the nerdy science of it, but what we need carbon dioxide in order to be able to push oxygen into our tissues right. and organs and all of that. So when we can't uptake carbon dioxide as well, we can't oxygenate the tissues as well. And so as we are less oxygenated in some way, right, that is going to affect fitness workout daily, your levels of tired, all of that. There are ways for us to build carbon dioxide tolerance in the body. There are easy practices that you can do every single day for like five minutes. And those things can change how your body, like when it sends the trigger to breathe and when it, it, it decides to, you know, how it decides to let levels of CO2 rise so that you can get as much oxygen as possible. And it's, it's certainly course correctable. Um, it's also, it's not a bad thing, quote unquote, there's no good or bad. It's just a physiological piece of science. Right. But yes, we can feel more tired and yes, we can feel um, more exacerbated or stressed easily or triggered easily by things like that. Um, you know, just because of having some less oxygenation and also that can happen to anyone all the time. And so yeah. getting on the floor, uh, I say getting on the floor because a lot of times I like to like lay down on the couch or the floor to just really remind myself there's no distractions on taking five minutes is something that you can really utilize to state shift. And then also when we're, if we're feeling wildly upset or super tired, it's like, you know, you can, of course you can take a nap and also <laughs> you can do a little bit of breath work. That's going to shift your nervous system state to sort of wake you up and increase your focus. And even just take, you know, a one minute, um, we would call it a breath break, you know, okay. to, be able to, to like shift how we feel during the day. And because here's the thing, we're going to run a gamut of emotions and we all want to be able to be in a space where we're feeling whatever positive is to us, right? It's like, I got up this morning super early. I just bought a hand pen. So I'm like rehearsing and, and, and learning that. I have a level of frustration with it because it's brand new. And of course I'm frustrated because I don't know what I'm doing. And I, you see videos and people are just masterful. It's never going to come yeah. overnight. Martin Scorsese's college film was probably not as good as things he made later on. So it's like, you just learn, you just learn and you like go through it. So I had some frustration around that. And, you know, holiday season is coming and my, my dad's passed on. I had a few tears over that. Like, you know, there's just, I've already gone through and this isn't about me being a female. I just this time of year, I, things going in my life, getting up early, feeling tired, feeling like hopeful about things. I've already gone through the gamut of a few emotions. Now, does that happen every day? No. Some days I just feel like I'm on, things are great. I'm moving, I'm trucking. And we yeah. all have that. So if you have if a tool as easy as breath work, as easy as, I mean, I think supplements can do this sometimes for us, you know, other things we can sort of add into the mix. If we have these tools and they're safe and they're effective and they're easy. It's use them. Spending time ruminating and being stuck in the process. And this is no slight on the process because sometimes we need to like cry and feel and, and lay down and have all of our feels or whatever, <laughs> but being able to take something and take five minutes and shift your state to say, okay, I, I need, I need to, it's important because I have kids or work or job or responsibilities. Yep. I need to just shift my state and move into the next part of my day. It's doable. You know? Yeah, it's that progress over perfection, right? Because I think we, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, there's great tools, social media, like we were talking about. You've got the, even your own personal example you just gave on, we're seeing these people who are proficient at something and that who knows how long they've taken to get that way. And here I am in minute one thinking I need to look like that. Well, yeah. is that really ex proper expectations of myself? Yeah. No, certainly not. So you got to give yourself a little bit of grace and uh, to, to be able to kind of, evolve and adapt to the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And I, like, uh, there's, um, a coach I've worked with who I, I know relatively well. Um, just, I met him personally before professionally, but he's been really beautifully, um, advising me uh, in moments in my life where I I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, I have big life questions. And he said to me one time, you know, recognize that our emotions are valid. Right. And this is like the rabbit hole, but our emotions are valid but they're not always our friends. Yeah. Right. So like, how, how do we, how do we not like get stuck in that pattern or how do we recognize and this is again, not to slight our emotional state, but how do we recognize the ways that we can shift that the ways that we can actually just, I think his point to me was cognitively, how do you recognize that before yeah. the swirling begins of you saying, everything is awful, <laughs> or this is so challenging or, you know, if, if you think he's also said to me no, a number of times, if you want to, um, he gives a lot of business advice with me, but it's like, if you want to, 
you say you don't know how to get to the next step, but I bet if you really put it down on paper and sat with that, like you do, it's just the, the, the managing the, like putting down the fear and saying, I'm going to go for this thing and being willing to fail and then getting it on paper and being like, okay, cause you have, you already know 80 or 90% of it. doesn't mean don't have yeah. a coach. doesn't mean don't. And so like, we look at, I look at that in business. I look at that with, when I work with women, I look at that with that in health. I'm not, listen, I have a lot of education and a lot of information and years and years of experimentation on my own body. And now with hundreds, if not thousands of women to apply that helps, right. To expedite the process of coaching and guiding a woman to her optimal well-being, which is my total peak expression on this planet. But is it going to be with every woman? This is why my one-on-one program is so great. It's highly customized with every woman that's going to be red light is your savior or ice fast is your savior or breath work. Right. And like, it's, how do I educate you on all the things that are efficient that like quite often women lately have been coming to me being like, I cannot even stand the amount of information and misinformation that's on WebMD and Google. Yeah. How do I go to someone who's an aggregator? I am an aggregator. I, yes. I have a level of expertise in breath and ice coaching for sure, because I work diligently. I have an, a level of expertise around fitness and female phy- physiology because I've trained for 15 plus years on all of this, but I am by no stretch, like the perfect answer to all these you know, on the perfect anecdote and, and, and a researcher or a scientist or someone who's like a Nobel prize winner, I just have called through the information and made the mistakes. And I'm so ready to share with women the best ways that they can get healthy. But let's really say what a few things are that are like, how do you optimize your wellness as a female or a male? There are some baseline things we all have an understanding of this innate understanding that food is important, that nutrition is important, that breathing the right way could possibly be important. Maybe we know that maybe we don't that we probably need to get some steps in. I mean, I, you yeah. know, I, I always say to females, the most important thing you can do is lift heavy shit. You got to <laughs> lift some heavy things. You do. And, you know, the more and more we, we see research coming out, it's like about around resistance training and hit training. And, you know, I, 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 um, I've been doing a lot of work on this machine called the ARX lately. And there's just, a, there's yeah. an understanding when you get on that machine about what it's really doing for you and the efficiencies it creates it's not to say the barbell or the dumbbells are wrong. It's just like, how are we evolving and how are we really making the best use of our time? And no one should be surprised that saying lifting some weight or having some resistance training or eating a little bit more healthfully, like that is none of that is a surprise to the women I work with. It's like how we can actually not make it inundating yes. in the sense of like overwhelming, keep it simple. Let's just make yeah. it simple, you know? And so that's, that's why I have a job in the world, right? Is I can get, uh, I can work with women and get them enough understanding in a scaffolded way that by the time that they're done working with me or they're done with my online course or they're coaching with my community group, they're like, ah, okay. For me, I have it under control. I know what's going on. I know where and when to expand that or to retract from that. And what I love is that they have a girlfriend and they're like, Hey, Mary, this cool thing I learned, or they take them to an ice plunge or they take them to a breathwork class. And then there's a reverberation into other women in the world. And I love that. I love that. That's part of the reason I'm doing the work I'm doing. I, yeah, I love it as, you know, made a joke earlier. I'm surrounded by women. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm, an old, I'm an older brother of two sisters, you know, I've got three daughters, I'm married. So uh, obviously I have a mother. Uh, so like the importance of women's health, but I, everything you just said to me is like the core thesis of the value of a coach. And I think, mm-hmm. um, overusing this term, this, this conversation, but permission, but like, uh, the, the discrediting of going to a coach to help with these things. I think to me, that's the easy button. If you're looking for the easy button to me, it's finding a, a coach who's going to help you coach in a community. Yeah. Um, that's going to get you where you want to be to help kind of take the pressure off a little bit. Yeah. To me, that's the one easy step is find a good coach, find a community, to engage with on the things that you individually want and, and help get that prescriptive approach. Yeah. Yeah. And it's game changing. It's like, I, I, I certainly didn't get to where I am without coaches. I right. So many coaches in so many avenues. And then ironically, especially in the early years, most of my coaches were males because they were the only ones showing up with like the science and giving me the science The the, I learned, you know, a number of years ago, I learned a lot of what I learned around fitness training and food physiology around women's hormones. And some, when a male mentor of mine was nutrition and fitness performance was like, here's the science. And I was like, why am I learning this from some dude 
it was, you know, five years younger than me and like all the things, like all this judgment, all this, like, but, but what I, it wasn't about him per se. It was like, why didn't my OBGYN tell me or my, but certainly my mom didn't tell me because she was never told and like, right. story right. never learned it. And, and I could have capitalized on 10 or 15 years more of like estrogen that I had and all the things to, to train differently or to just, you know, make decisions in a different way. And so I certainly have dropped, I don't have any frustration with that, but like early on too, in the biohacking community, and, and you know this because, you know, you've seen that unfold. There's, it was a lot of male energy and a lot of men. And I think that's because it sort of started with a bit of a, of a riskier, it just felt a little risky. Some of the things that were going on and that term biohacking feels a little edgy in some way. And people yeah. were like cryotherapy when it first came out or like when it was first popularized, I just remember, you know, people talking about, somebody was frozen to death in the cryo chamber. Like, you know, it's like all of these things and like needles and injections and, you know, all of this stuff. And I think that's part of the reason I continue to use the word biohacking in my practice is because I want to make, continue to make it approachable and understand that it includes ancient practices like breath work. It includes getting in cold, which by the way, like, and I love Wim Hof, but like thousands of years, people have been doing cold exposure <laughs> and sauna practices in some way or another, you know? And yeah. so it's like, we just, we, we, we overlook that sometimes in the biohacking community. And I think, you know, the, the key component is really understanding our own, what are the tools that are going to work for us? Because if yeah. I say this all the time to clients, if I told, if you hate kickboxing and, you know, I don't just to make an example, if you hate kickboxing and you hate, I don't know, tuna. And I tell you, if you just eat tuna and kickbox every single day for the rest of your life, you'll get every single goal you want. You'll be happy. You're not going to be happy because you're not, you don't want to adhere to that. And like, so adherence is key, right? Finding the things that you will love to be able to do. And sometimes it's type two fun. Let's be clear. You're you, it's fun after you're done because some days are harder than others to train, but you got to show up for yourself. You got to calendar things for yourself. It's like the most important dates you have in the week in your calendar, the days that you've aligned yourself to get some fitness and do your nutrition or whatever the things, put your breath work routine in. And when you cancel on yourself, you basically cancel on everything. Yeah. It's like the worst person you can cancel on. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, a lot of that is, is then, tying it back to your own personal vision for yourself and, and the life that you're looking to lead so that those hard things have kind of, not, I don't know, validation is the right thing, but like confirmation towards what you're building towards to prepare yeah. you for that, you know, that little hard thing and that workout that prepares you for that really hard thing that you're not aware of yet in life, whether it's a personal trauma or a work experience or whatever that thing might be, you're now prepared and know you're prepared to handle that thing in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And then this, I say this a lot about ice baths, you know, we don't go in the ice bath, you know, five times a week or whatever, three times a week to get good at ice baths. We, we go in the ice to get good in life. Yeah. We meditate to get good at life. We eat well to get good at life. And you know, because you've had things like this in your life where you do the simple consistencies every day because either someone motivated you or you, you know, something changed or you had a trauma or you're trying to fix something that came up or you just got dedicated about one path and you do the thing every day. And then you, you look back almost in a sense of all oh, like, wait a minute, I lost 10 pounds of, you know, I, I shifted my body composition, you know, body fat reduction, right? Got yeah. smarter. Or I learned this language or I learned the hand pan or I like, oh my goodness, I have so much energy. How did I get here? You almost don't know. Yes. And, and, and like, it's, it's, it's just right there. You just did it. You did it every day consistently along enough along the path that you've gotten to the place where you have this aha moment. And at the end of my 13 week program, the custom program I have, and, and, and even like women who are working in my, I have a year long group coaching. That's like an online course meets group coaching sessions on, on zoom, they go through the steps of the process and they're like, Oh, I didn't really believe you when you said I'd like meet my next best self. And like, <laughs> like, like, what does that mean? Like, and then they're like, how did I get here? I can't yeah. believe it. Women who are like, I love Cheetos and I'll do whatever you say, Kristen, but I am never giving up <laughs> Cheetos ever. I, you have to, if you tell me I can't have Cheetos ever again, I'm not doing work with wow. you. <laughs> yeah. And I'll say, just as an example, that's like a real life example. And then at the end of that program, you know, the end of like, I worked four months with this one woman and, um, at the end she was like, I went to like have, um, she went off of Cheetos for a little while and she went to go have them as like a reward or she was, I went to go have them. They're awful. 
<laughs> now I hate you and I love you because I don't want to even eat them anymore because all of a sudden my taste buds have changed and my palate yeah. has changed and my body has changed and I just don't feel as good. I wanted them to be this like robust, beautiful, flavorful, and they're just not anymore. Yeah. And like those kinds of things happen. And those are actual physical differences that are happening in the body that feel I mean, beautiful in the long run. And then they say, how did I get here? This is the number one thing in my life I loved was Cheetos. And now (laughs) I don't want them anymore. And it's like, cool. Like, let's, let's, let's dive into all of the pieces of our life so that we know that everything we're choosing is really what we want. So let me ask you this as a coach, how do you help people go through that mental barrier of like, I didn't believe you. Cause I, 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 even though I know it, I still struggle with that myself as every person I'm sure does is like, I get new plateaus and then I find new glass ceilings for myself. But Mm -hmm. that, that narrative that's saying, you know, it's not going to happen in in that slow boil of success that, that consistency really answers. How do you navigate that as a coach? Um, First I have to walk the talk, right. Which is like, look, just like everybody else, like there's mornings that I just want to sleep in. (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, whatever. And like, sometimes do I allow myself to do that? Sure. The holiday season and all, but, um, you know, having a morning routine myself, walking the talk, doing the work with people to make sure that they understand that I understand. If, and mm-hmm. Sometimes people are reticent or maybe they're just like, I don't know how to get started. And it's like, okay, great. Let's get on a zoom call and do some breath work together. Or, um, you know, walking them through cold plunge experiences and titrating titrating, just meaning like, this is about small steps. Okay. Right? And so how do I give them, I give them small steps to get to the larger goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then for me, a big thing of working with women is like not have, there's no shame. All your shit, all your shit is welcome here. There's no, sh- I don't want any shame dynamic. Like, of course those things do come up, but I'm never going to shame someone. I don't want them to have that level of, um, restriction, sometimes like an overly restrictive thing. Uh, let, let's just talk about food. Cause it's the easy one. But when people yeah. are restricting things in their diet, they're feeling restricted and they almost want them more. And so making sure that it doesn't feel like too much restriction with anything that they're doing. Yeah. And then, you know, really, I always, I'm the best cheerleader and accountability partner that a woman can have. It's about the model of how many women I work with at a time and how much dedicated effort and energy I give to them. It's about the fact that I, you know, over time, I typically befriend a lot of my one-on-one clients who just get to know each other so well. And it's, I'm just going to continually show up and listen and, and reflect back what I see, the experience of women. I also don't, well, for the women I work with, I won't let them talk negatively about themselves. And um, and the other big piece is, you know, a lot of people like you see this expression, like hashtag, keep going, keep going. And that is true. Like, keep going. You have to yeah, keep going. Yeah. Like you just have to get up and keep going. And you may not like what you're doing, but I think that the, the, it's not as much about, it is about keep going, but the more important thing is about keep doing. Yeah. Like there, what does it feel like to go and ha- and do, I have some women who are on, on my online course who I work a lot with like Brett Contreras's program. It's a great home uh, workout training program a lot around like glutes and leg strength and stuff. And so women are all like big booty. I want a big booty and whatever, but, but there are plenty of mornings those women get up and they're at home and they're like, I just don't want to do the workout. And it's like, if you can just recognize that and do it anyway, keep doing instead of just keep going. I think there's a slight differential in that, in that semantic shift. Yeah. That you just do the doing. And even if it's like, I got 20 minutes in because I kids this or school that or work this, like just being proud of yourself to get, the portional amount of work done. Um, and then, and then the shame piece is like, if you miss a day or you fall off something you said you were going to do, let's not spend a week beating ourselves up or spiraling out of control around that. Yeah. Let's just find the Avenue. It's like, okay, cool. We, we know that that happened. And for this reason, and how do we get, how do we get back on the train? Yeah. Yeah. Self-judgment. I mean, I th- certainly, um, the vocabulary is probably different for men and women to some extent, but it happens to all of us that I've been trying to use some of my own, uh, ways to get off that cycle of like assess versus evaluate. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to be with the assess. I mean, try to be objective. We're evaluating that comes that personal attack kind of mindset. So I just, all right. Or am I assessing or am I evaluating right now? Yeah. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. It makes great sense. And it's a great differentiator for sure. Because you just want it, you want to almost look at it like an out with an outside viewpoint with a non judgmental yeah. lens. And it's hard you know, to accountability, do accountability is really important, you know, especially when we're building routine and we're building, um, 
you know, this notion of self-confidence. Yeah. Someone on the other end of the phone, like I, the one-on-one clients I work with, we text every single day for 13 weeks. So talk about a woman's got to be ready to be yeah. working with me commitment. in that capacity. And it's a level of commitment. Sure. Financially, of course, but also time commitment. It doesn't mean I'm going to be like invasively in their lives for hours of a day unless they need that. But mostly it's like, we're going to get to know each other. This is like, you know, dating. You got to have a coach that you get along with and that you trust. And I'm also, I'm, I, I talk a lot about my father and still listens to me. Like you need to be firm, fun, and fair. I like that. And, and I won't, I will call people out on their BS because there's, um, we all do that, right? We all, we all, we all, but I couldn't fit in because there are, there are times that that's real. There are times that that is, um, uh, letting ourselves off the hook too easily. We yeah. can do hard, we can do hard things, uh, and we don't even know the capacity that our our bodies have until we try. And so, yeah, navigating that firm, fair, and fun. You know, yeah. keeping it light when you can, and then and then leaning into um, the hard work. Right. A lot of times, I talk about the could we philosophy, which is like the like could we doesn't feel like we want to, but could we get to the gym? Could we do the thing? Could we do the breath work? Yeah. Could we skip the TV show and try the sitting in front of the red light panel and meditating? All of that is, is, you know, what would it feel like to do that? Yeah. So how do you, um, integrate the other side of that where there is the restaurant recovery podcast and culturally mm-hmm. where I'm coming from, I'm sure you, you were in corporate America for many years as a yeah. leader that there's that water cooler, 2 a.m. up at five mentality, like the grind mentality that I think is missing the third leg of the stool, which is the rest, rest and recovery. Mm-hmm. How do you help equip clients or folks listening with the tools to discern the difference between um, um, trying to give myself a hall pass or maybe I actually need a day off? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a, you know, uh, my, my, a very close friend of mine who's also a beautiful meditation leader in the world. Emily Fletcher has a book called stress less accomplish more. Mm-hmm. And that, that philosophy is really a thing like taking 20 minutes out of your day to nap or meditate or do some breath work or get your cold on, or maybe lift some heavy stuff. Um, but especially when you talk about recovery, right? So if we're leaving that, 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 gym time off the table, but if we're putting recovery practices in our day, and we are also focusing on the number one baseline for recovery, which you talk about, and everyone at this point needs to know is sleep Yeah, that without the appropriate amounts of sleep, without sort of tracking your sleep, setting yourself up for success in some way and getting an understanding of what your sleep patterns are, you know, once we have sleep down to a science or at least a trackable art form for ourselves, then we can layer these other recovery and resting modalities on. And you know, time after time, again, people taking 20 minutes out of their day to meditate, or in, in many cases, in my case, when the work I do with Emily at Ziva is, is, you know, my meditation practice is twice a day, 20 minutes a day. Am I perfect every day? No, absolutely not. But you think 40 minutes out of your day, plus all the other things that I'm doing to walk the talk that I have and client work, and like you think 40 minutes out of your day is going to crush the things you need to get done. But the reality is that you give yourself pause You give your brain and your neuroplasticity a chance to sort of stack and be in order and rest enough that you can then actually accomplish more things in a shorter period of time. There's less spinning, there's more discernment, there's like, you know, knowing when to say no, um, which is is another problem we have in this society, I think, is that we say a lot of people are saying yes to a lot of things and then they can't do them all. Yeah. And so that all builds back into recovery and getting the rest that you need and like, uh, People with families, you know, women, men and the like with families, understanding how they can incorporate these practices into family time, Yeah. how you manage your television usage, how you manage meditation in the morning, like knowing that when you're sitting and doing breath work, if your kids are climbing all over you or whatever, it's just part of it. It's just part of the experience. And you can just do that. And maybe as the kids grow into older ages, like my niece and nephew, if I'm sitting and I'm breathing and they're making fun of me or they're throwing things at whatever, like eventually that they will like kind of sit down and respect that and sit down and know and sit down and say, okay, this time is sacred. And, you know, part of the reason with breath work and meditation also, you can have kids kind of gravitate in some way. And like animals also in your house, you'll see they'll kind of gravitate to you when you're sitting in that space, because energetically you're sort of putting something out that feels safe, that feels downregulated. And that's the jam. Like we are only, I say this a hundred times. And if I've said a hundred times, I've said it a thousand, like we're only as fit as what we can recover from. Yeah. I learned that from 
Dan Garner, who's one of the guys who educated me on women's hormone health and fitness and, and nutrition around, around the female physiology. It's like, we're only as fit as what we can recover from. And yeah. the rest that's of why the- you have a podcast, man. That's right. <laughs> Uh, you just validated my existence. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, but I mean, the rest makes the work work is what I've been saying lately is like it, it, all, all the busting your ass on all that other stuff. It doesn't invalidate it. It affirms it. And so having that healthy boundary on taking some time to rest when you go to bed and, and finding that little window, um, it, it just, helps your body recharge to be able to do all those other things that you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, it's a, it's a delicate balance. There's it times is. in my life that I've like woven in, but I need to recover. And it's like, all of a sudden it's like, actually you don't need to recover now as much as you need to like get that episode of your podcast out, Kristen, because you're just procrastinating. Right. Like, you also right. have to take this landscape in that's like, how are you navigating that? Or yes. we're never going to make perfect decisions all the time. And that's fine. And, and there's a large population percentage of our population as well, though, that it's not the biohackers, the health and fitness enthusiasts that are like working too hard, going too fast, especially females, right? We're in a culture that is sort of, sort of designed under the fluorescent lights of, you know, the male 24 hour clock in the office and the way that we are like, you know, it's, it's, don't get me wrong. I love, I, I have a lot of masculine energy in the way that I, I, I show up in the world. And something I'm really working on now is just weaving more of my femininity and the softness that falls within the strength because it is a communication tool and it is a superpower. But I love the Jocko Willinks of the world and the Joe Rogans and the like, go hard and like, yeah. you know, grit it out. And it doesn't matter. Just do it anyway. Like, you know, paint is game. Like, okay. Yes. I love that. I, I, but the, the truth is when you, when you build this all the way back to the nervous system, it is like, that is everyone living in a sympathetic nervous system state. And that is not healthy in the long run. It is just not in, in a longevity landscape that is not healthy. And I, I have powered through so much of my life and my corporate America experience and the way that I've worked in the past you know, warrior woman mode is the name of my business and my handle. And I always knew and have always spoken about this warrior archetype as yeah. having softness within that right it's also gentle warrior but like no one sees the word warrior like that people men especially will come to me like ah, i hate that it's a feminist thing the name of your company it's like no i don't ever i've never looked at the values of the archetype of my business that way but we powerhouse and we push and our societal is it's very acceptable to like grid it out and all yeah. that it's not serving us let's say that again it is not serving us to do that 24 seven, because we are frying our nervous system. We are like right now, let's talk about it. We are just suppressing our immune system, right? We yeah. need to like be in a space of really finding out what's the minimum effective dose of stress that we can have. Some stress is not bad stress. You stress is, you know, good distress is not good. What is the minimum effective dose of stress? That's like, how long am I holding my breath? How much, how many minutes am I sitting in the ice bath? What am I doing when it comes to, um, you know, shifting my diet and, and, and the type of stress that comes along with, if you're like, I'm going to make welcome to it almost being new year's and when everyone's going to be like, I'm cutting out sugar. I'm going yeah, for a run every day. I'm going in the ice bath every day. And it's like, um, so you just, you've gone from not from like having your holiday meals and chilling out and drinking wine to like 15 things you've just woven in your life, which is why I don't really believe in this, like, new year's resolution. resolution thing because yeah. it just crushes you and it's like let's just like create a solution for that please. <laughs> yeah right um, doesn't mean you can't have a reset or a restart or like say okay great i want to functionally weave in something different for this next calendar year and um no need yeah you know how many people set like 15 goals and then by like january 13th they're like whatever yeah <laughs> yeah exactly i 100 agree and i think i think at the end of the day it boils down to it it's not invalid, the thoughts, it's the application of those ideas. And you use the words, one of my favorite words is discernment is really discerning the application of all the things, not all the things at once. And, you know, I'm a black belt at, at, at that. That's kind of the basis of how I got started on the podcast um, was trying to do it all at one time and mm-hmm. not accounting for the, the rest and recovery piece, or just even the impact of doing the things like, the idea of doing something is much smaller than the application, right? We, we think, Oh, this idea is a great idea. Well, sure. But it also takes like 12 hours of work in the week. Do you have 12 hours of work in the week to, to put that in? So maybe that's not the right 
one. So maybe you look directionally correct, not that exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, had, I wrote, I write uh, things on my mirror all the time in dry yeah. erase marker just to keep me reminded of my goals and trajectory and long-term vision and mm. positive self-talk and whatever. I like, I recommend yeah. this to everyone, but it's like a dollar for a dry erase marker or a pack of five is, you know, two ninety nine. Just buy a bunch of dry erase markers and then write things on the mirror that will keep you. So when you hit the mirror in the morning or in the afternoon or whatever, that just will keep you a little bit on track or maybe make you smile or write something funny, like doing that. I really just like love that practice. But I, for a very long time, I had one up that I just wrote and loved and it helped me reaffirm every day that like our dreams are powered by action and discernment. So there's that doing piece. And there's that saying yes or saying no. And if it's not a hell yes, we need to say no, because if we don't discern, we don't have the time to get the things done that we want. And that's, yeah. that's how we fulfill our dreams. And I think that, you know, that can go for health or coaching or business or podcasts or whatever you're doing in your life. And the baseline to all of that is like, you know, getting in the right amount of rest, but also putting yourself in the healthiest space possible that you have energy to do these things. Yep. Yep. That's you know? great. Yeah. yeah. Kristen. Uh, so appreciate your insight and wisdom, um, you know, like I said, as a father of three girls in seeing some things uh, evolve, it's, it's encouraging for me as a dad to, to see my daughters being able to be equipped effectively. Um, and, you know, I, I think my oldest I've gotten at talk about raising a child as they should go and seeing things like having these conversations I've got my oldest, I think is, is on her way to being a biohacker. Uh, she's asking about right, start him young. <laughs> right. That's right. But I, I, yeah, I just want to say thank you for that. And, um, as you know, I close out with a few questions, mm -hmm. personal, not too in depth, but what are you reading right now? Um, I wish I remembered what I was reading before, but I'm reading a book called force versus allow. Okay. Uh, my word for 2022 is allow and uh, a lot because I have a sympathetic dominant nervous system and because I'm powering through a lot of the things that I do and um, have realized quite often in my life that I'm like, um, I don't know if I'm forcing a square peg in a round hole, but then I'm like pushing for things to happen almost so vehemently that it's like uh, detrimental to me, detrimental to the outcome, or maybe yeah. I'm winning the thing and then being like, why did I even go for that? Um so uh, bringing a more allowance into my life is uh, something that I'm focused on for 2022 and just uh, not navigating so hard, but letting being navigated, yeah. being breathed by the world and just like letting, allowing things to come in and come out as they will. No, I appreciate yeah, universally. That. That's my, that's the book. I'm, a, I'm, I'm like four, chapter four or something. So I still have a bit to go, but it's, a, it's uh, the opening of the book. I will just say this really briefly says, here's all the things you might've tried to get yourself to enlightenment, to get yourself to understand like the universal source. And it's like a, this massive list of stuff. And then it just I made me laugh because it's like all these things I've tried, all these biohacks, all these, you know, sitting on the top of a mountain and, you know, just, it's like, you know, and it's, the book was written, you know, quite some time ago and it's just yeah. a, a riff on that. So it's, it's just beautiful to go. I'm not alone. Everyone's trying all this The human stuff. condition. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. What are you listening to right now? Be it music or podcast. Uh, I am podcast. I'm a big Huberman fan, uh, mm -hmm. Andrew Huberman, like, uh, you know, that just sort of, I, I want to say it goes without saying, uh, I love his podcast, just like science. He's been doing a ton of breath and ice conversation, yep. um, most of which I agree with some of which I'm like, you know, I just get in there and I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, I want more research on women always. Um, which is, if it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. So I'm loving, um, uh, Huberman Lab podcast. Um, also, my biohacking bestie is Freddie Kimmel, and he spoke at the conference where you and I met, but he yep. has a beautifully broken podcast where he talks a lot about mold to toxicity and chronic illness. Um, he's a proud cancer survivor, and so he talks a lot about that. And then um, I will just say, um, from a music standpoint, uh, I've been listening to a lot of this German group that is just music, and I'm going to tell you the name of it because I think it's like, super beautiful to anyone who's looking to do some breath work to some um, instrumental type of music that's grand brothers all one word um it's got some beautiful like piano and it's a little it's got a little like i don't want to say dance vibe to it but it's like you know it's like electronic music yeah but um it's called grand brothers and it's really great they have lots of different cadences and things you can kind of create your own breath work too and i i just i'm really loving it and um only recently was introduced to them by a german friend of mine so cool very cool 
All right. What is your go-to rest and recovery method? Ice always. I mean, breath is, I don't want to say breath is built in, but breath is also built into the ice piece, but yeah. I have um, a Morosco forge in my backyard. I'm so fortunate to be able to own one of those. Um, I coach in it here as well. I do for men and women. I have people come over in um, private and semi-private groups and do breath and then ice and ice to me is a great equalizer. It's like, tells me immediately I have to be present and in the now it tells me immediately where my stress or my allostatic load is just meaning how much stress do I have or not? What's my tolerance feel like for the day? It gives me a real clear, um, reverberation on my emotional state. And then also can give me a nervous system reset, um, when you get out, you get this beautiful parasympathetic rebound and it just sort of shifts your emotional state. Cool. That being said, I also want to mention that I'm conservative for women ice bathing every day or going in ice plunges every day. I don't think there are that many women that are doing that every single day, but um, just with our hormone profile, especially if we're dysregulated or have dysfunction going on in our hormone set, it's important to not overdo it. Um, I've done like 34 days straight and dysregulated my hormones from normal to <laughs> so have them going wonky sideways. So, um, Men are a little bit more adept, it seems, physiologically to ice bath every single day. I think, you know, three days a week is totally fine and applicable for women and super, super helpful for stress management and reset and phys physiology and, and building brown adipose tissue, which we love to fire our metabolism that way. So cool. ice is the jam, you know, and you got to, if you can breathe calmly and easily, like you're in on a beach in, you know, Maui with a virgin pina colada in your hand while you're sitting in 33 degree Fahrenheit water for six minutes, then you know, you have a really good grasp on how to manage, you know, elements of stress in your day-to-day -day life. It's a great practice. Something to strive for something I've also <laughs> yeah. completely. Yeah. But Kristen, thank you again so much for your time and uh, what you're doing. Yeah, of course. Of course. I am super happy to be here with you, Scott. And if anyone's looking to find me, I'm at warrior woman mode on Instagram. I'm sure you'll throw stuff in the show notes. I also have a course that's online called wow factor, which is women optimizing wellness is what the wow stands for. And it is a, it's a very financially affordable course to get into. And with that course, you get a year of group coaching twice a month for, with me um, online with this great community of women that we have pulled together. And so uh, anyone who's interested, they can find links to that on warriorwomanmode.com or Instagram or on my podcast, Wellpower, any of those things. I'm around. I'm around. Great. Yeah. Well, definitely be sure to uh, include that in the show notes and, and uh, get people signed up. So thanks, cool. Kristen. Awesome. Yeah. Have a sweet holiday. And then um, I'm sure we'll talk in 2022 and just enjoy your time with all, with all those beautiful women you get to have yes. in your life. Yes. Got lots of them. Thank you. You too. Merry Christmas. Okay. Take care. Bye.